What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Sheer Day with Kittens. I'm Kittens, and today we're actually going to be doing a live episode. I recorded it in Nashville, so like th- I- I'm just I'm just having a quick chat with you before we get into that. But today's episode is so special and exciting. First of all, it's Pride Month. We're in the middle of Pride Month. It's June, and there's so much that's happened this year that is happening. Um, I feel like I'm gonna have to break that all down in a whole other episode. But we all know there's been some crazy, crazy stuff happening against LGBTQIA++ people in this country all over the world. But I'm specifically talking about the United States right now because, man, they are just like the conservative, like extra, extra, you know, far right people in the government and all around are really coming after queer rights, trans rights, women's rights. Like it's, it's getting very, very wild, uh, lately. Like, I feel like it just exponentially, like they were just like, let's, let's go hard 2023 and like scare everybody. And they, they really are. So I thought it was really important to get down to Nashville where there was kind of some of the most, um, extreme anti LGBT legislation happening. They were doing the whole drag ban. They're trying to go after trans people. They're going after abortion. Like they're doing all the scary things. And I really wanted to have a chat with some of the local people who are, you know, involved in the queer community around there to see how they're dealing, what's, what's going on, what people can do, how it's affecting their community, like just everything. So in today's episode, I'm going to be plug the episode in here, but we're coming live from Nashville, Tennessee at the one hotel at Harriet's, which is this beautiful hotel, beautiful rooftop that they offered for me. Thank you guys so much. And I'll be chatting with two local drag queens. One is an OG that's been in Tennessee forever. And she's a very, very, um, outspoken, involved advocate. And the other is from New Orleans originally, moved to Nashville, and she's a bit newer on the scene. So we'll get some two different perspectives on what's going on, what's changed, what's to come. But I'm really excited to announce this. Um, They actually literally, I think it was yesterday I got the news that a judge in Tennessee threw out the bill that was essentially the drag ban. They said, nah, this is too vague. It doesn't make sense. Screw it. So thankfully, that is something to celebrate. At least that's one less thing to worry about. But that is a difference of events that's happened between when um, I filmed this live episode in Nashville and now. So so everything we talk about is still super relevant because there's still a wild attack on rights for queer trans people and just anybody who's different, um, different according to to. uh, that kind of society. So let's get into today's episode. Oh, before we get started though, please make sure you like and subscribe. Follow on Instagram at she, her, they, and at I am kittens. Go to the website, www.sheherthey.com. Sign up for the mailing list. I'll be sending all kinds of, you know, behind the scenes, extra bits, early access links, early, you know, just all kinds of cute stuff. So go, go make sure you subscribe to the mailing list. And happy pride to everybody who celebrates. Shout out to all the allies, too. We need you. We appreciate you. We love you. Okay, let's get into this. All right. Welcome back to another episode of She, Her, They with Kittens. I'm Kittens. And today we are live from Nashville, Tennessee at Harriet's at the One Hotel. And today is very, very special, obviously, because number one, this is the first live episode, live recording we're doing of this. But I'm joined by two very special, special guests. I have two incredible local drag queens. We have Miss Vidalia and Miss Delta Granta. 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 I'm like, I I don't know why I want to like It's just the boy name with an A on the end. (laughs) Everyone loves to put like the Granta on it. I'm like, it's just Granta. I'm just like, let them have a little pizzazz on it. I wanted to say Granta and Vidalia. I don't know why. It's like, there's (laughs) something there. I love it. We're like British Southern Queens now. (laughs) Vidalia on Gentry. (laughs) I love it. I love it. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. And yeah, I'm really excited to to chat and get into all the bits. But 
Before we do anything like that, I always have everybody introduce themselves. So if you would go ahead and introduce yourself, your pronouns, how you identify, that can be your background, your ethnicity, your sexuality, your career, like literally anything that you feel like makes you you, spill it. So Delta, go ahead. Oh, cool. Well, my name is Delta Granta, like you said. Um, my pronouns in drag are she, her. Out of drag, it's he, they. Um, I am identify mostly as non-binary. It's kind of like a like loose non-binary. It's more of a like state of mind thing for me mm-hmm. with like differentiating between drag and Grant's personality mm-hmm. and not trying to be the same all at once. So that's why I'm kind of more on the they them side, but it's subjective and changes daily. Yeah. Well, and your tagline is Nashville's Cajun Persuasion. So yeah, I'm just persuading. Are you like Cajun or something? Are you like from Louisiana? Oh yeah, that too. I am. I hail from the Acadiana region of um, Louisiana, Cute. which means I'm Cajun French. I'm also mm-hmm. Spanish from Spain. So Such a little a mix of all wife. kind of stuff. <laughs> and I'm Vidalia Ann Gentry. I'm a Nashville-based drag entertainer. Vidalia Ann Gentry makes my initials V-A-G. So many people will call me Vag for short. I'll also answer to Vidalia and a whole host of other things. Um, in drag, my pronouns are 100% she, her. Out of drag, she, they. He is acceptable as well, but it feels like you're my mom. Depends like, on yeah. who. Yeah. Right. yeah. Like, whoa. you know, it's just one of those things where if I'm hanging out with my girlfriends and somebody gets he hemmed, I'm like, uh, that felt homophobic. Yeah. I know it yeah. wasn't I know it wasn't intended that yeah. way, yeah, but yeah, it just yeah. kind of came just, out of left yeah. field there. Felt like an attack, like, but that's fine. Masculinity? <laughs> Not here. No, thank you. I feel like family members are like still the he, but everybody else like does their part. Like my best friend always makes it a point to be like, they. Right. But like everybody else is just like, oh, Grant's doing his thing. And I'm like, okay, well, whatever. So they really fine. hold on to it for dear life. Truly. I mean, we had to talk about about it and I was like I'm not transitioning or whatever but like this is just where I'm at mentally and they were yeah. like okay cool we support that but like yeah. we're still doing this I feel like that's a really relatable story for a lot of people when they start drag I know my mom personally when I first was like talking to her about doing drag her first concern was like are you transitioning are you trans right. and concern was I'm, I say that because like that was what I was getting from her is that she was concerned about it mm. I think she's definitely like opened up right. I think I could be like if I were like you get over it right right, right. <laughs> my sure. parents my parents are very supportive like i'm very oh, grateful for that nice. um but i think that that story is is very relatable for so many queer people especially drag entertainers mm-hmm. that um cross the line of the gender binary yeah so that's really interesting that you brought that up as well because i know that's true for me yeah th- i mean this is something i really i just i wanted to touch on because generally like i'm the friend that all of my friends who are maybe not like super up on what is appropriate Mm -hmm. or super respectful. I'm the one that they call and they're like, okay, so I have a new client and they're, you know, they, they're not using any pronouns. What do I do? And I'm like, just ask. Just ask. Yeah. I mean, it's so simple. Just ask and keep it in mind. And if you slip up, as long as your intention isn't like to be harmful and malicious, and you're open to learning. Yeah. Learn, correct. Tone of voice is always important. And then also totally. like a general thing is like if you really don't know, I feel like they, them doesn't really offend anyone. Right. They, them or someone's yeah. name. Yeah. Or a name. Just use their yeah. name. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's way easier. You know, as somebody who waited tables for 18 years, I don't know that I love hay being just hurled at me. <laughs> right. But you hey, know, like you? there's no gender attached to hay. So yeah. why not? Or like we were talking about, if it's more than one person, you can skip you guys. I want to empower everybody out there that's listening right yeah. now. As we're here in Nashville, and as a Nashvillian, I'm empowering you to use y'all. Yeah. It is the American second person plural non gendered pronoun. It's available to all y'all out yeah. there. So y'all. get into it. We love y'all. We love folks. Miranda Lambert right. says, yes. y'all can't go wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, if you don't love somebody, you can say folks, but make it sound like fucks. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Well, I'm so excited to just chat about all this stuff because I think, you know, I'm from born and raised in L.A., so mm-hmm. it's I'm very like West Coast culture. And even though I, I try to stay up on everything, there's only so much information you can get from the Internet and, you know, just like reading. So I would love to hear about what y'all think is the most. I don't know what makes Nashville itself, number one, but just a southern state that's clearly pretty conservative, not really um, super excited about marginalized folks, let alone LGBTQ folks and drag and all that. What do you think makes Nashville and then also Tennessee unique as far as the queer community goes and the drag community? Like what 
what makes it stand out to you? Pros, cons, like any thoughts? Do you want to answer that, Delta? Yeah. Um, I was going to say, I feel like, well, I'm, so I'm from Louisiana and I moved here three years ago and I didn't do drag there, but I went on the scene and saw the local drag queens. And I would say in Nashville alone, we have a hundred plus drag queens. In oh, Louisiana wow. alone, I feel like there's like only a hundred drag queens and that's the whole state. And like from New Orleans to Shreveport is a five hour drive. So it's not like it's a tiny state. Um, we have a lot of diverse talent here and I feel like we are as um, comparable to scenes like Dallas and LA and New York and Chicago and Miami. Like we're up there as well, but we're just not the city that has been the city in past years. But like Nashville is growing and gaining. Mm -hmm. And I think with all of this press that we've gotten recently, it's not going to stop and it's only going to expand. Right? Um, I So if I go on for too long about this, then feel free to tell me to hurry up. Because no, I can, no, the more this the better. Is kind of like my raison d'etre. Um, so Nashville, um, I guess historically, I think people don't necessarily think of it as a, as a, as a big gay community, a big mm -hmm. queer community, a big drag community. But I think it's really interesting to point out that in 1976, the Miss Gay America pageant started right, right here in Nashville. Oh, wow. I didn't know And that. Miss Gay America is the pageant that pretty much defined what we now look at as like modern. It's one of the like top four or five pageantry. most prestigious oh, gay wow. pageants. So that started here in Nashville in the 70s. And what else was going on in Nashville in the 70s? Dolly and rhinestones and sequins. Porter right. and rhinestones and sequins. Right. Yeah. So do I have like categorical evidence that those things were happening together no but like it wouldn't surprise me yeah. if there was a severe intersection i will say even without evidence on paper i am very comfortable saying a straight man did not tell those two to dress like that yeah like that was not a straight man that decided yeah. that um so if you look at that in our history and then you look back into like the late 90s the early aughts we had significantly more operating identified as queer spaces, mm -hmm. 10 to 15 maybe at the time. And we had this one massive complex called The Connection. And um, for an extended period of time, drag queens could work anywhere in the city. And as we see even today, drag entertainers, I mean, the queen part of it really falls into like having this following, like your, your subjects, quote unquote, right. that follow you around. And so there's this really intense relationship between like the audience and the community and these drag entertainers, these figureheads. Um, and so because people were able to move around so much there was a lot of a lot of fluidity a lot of growth a lot of diversity mm -hmm. um things kind of got restricted a little bit in like the 05 area in what uh, way well there were some bars that you put some people under exclusion clauses which meant that they were only working at one space so their following wasn't traveling around they were pulled out of other spaces whether it was intentional or not i i think that the effects of it were that it restricted the community a bit mm -hmm. i think on top of that nashville was also kind of going through like a kind of like shrinking period mm -hmm. um so all of that combined we saw some spaces closed but now i think we're definitely in a period of expansion um yeah, i know that sure. i myself have like intentionally done work to expand the drag community and the queer community here and make sure that we are given space in spaces that are maybe not traditionally queer spaces um and so we have seen all these new entertainers we're seeing not just the gay bars offering spaces to drag entertainers we're seeing hotels like virgin the one hotel right here that we're in today mm -hmm. um we're seeing new bars opening we're seeing just an expansion here and we're seeing not only are people starting drag here but people who maybe have established themselves in other cities are making moves into nashville mm -hmm. and yeah. i think that's an indication of what we're really creating here so outside of the drag scene i think what really makes nashville interesting and it may take a minute to get there this is going to sound scary as shit when i first <laughs> yeah. say it but I think that you have to look at the context of Nashville being the Protestant Vatican, the buckle of the Bible Belt. And I think that like without that, Music City would not be what it is to begin with. Mm -hmm. So all of these queer kids growing up in the church, it's the first stage we found. Yeah. I know that's the truth for me. It's the first place I learned music was in the mm -hmm. church house. Wow. And so like all that. of my performance background really started in church. Wow. And I know I'm not the only one. So I think if we were to completely lose that, then we would see a very different Nashville. But then beyond that, because it's Music City, every bar in this town, whether it's like four by four, 20 by 20, like every bar in this town has a stage. Yeah. Mm. So whether it's music or drag or whatever other performance art, there are places in Nashville to showcase it. Right. And so I think that like that makes for like a really interesting and diverse community as long as we embrace what we have available to us.
Right. Wow. God, I didn't even think about the the church impact. I feel like so many people I've talked to, so many musician friends, so many people who are just in entertainment in general have said the same thing mm-hmm. where like I started, you know, I started in the church choir, I started playing keys for the church, mm-hmm. I started, you know, whatever and then they took a hard left and they're like, I'm, you know, whatever I'm doing now, but it's it's really interesting and it's so funny the 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 place that for the most part kind of um Traumatize traumatizes yeah. and vilifies you for I mean, being who you are has actually been integral in creating who you are. Yeah. I, I, I think that so. we're seeing right now um a sort of an interesting shift or like swing of the pendulum that like I I think it's a very sort of common millennial experience, I'll be 36 at the end of the month, to to have this religious trauma, to have Mm -hmm. been brought up in the church. And and I know for me personally, what I took away from my church upbringing, and I don't identify as religious now, I agnostic, atheist, somewhere in the middle, Mm -hmm. I whatever. Like spirituality is spirituality. Right. If you need to define it. You can have faith without religion. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But what I took away were the lessons of loving your neighbor and kindness and acceptance Mm -hmm. and like the lessons of, 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 you know, this particular religion savior, Jesus Christ, like spending time with the least of us. Right. And so what we're seeing sort of in the broad spectrum is not in line with that. So it's very confusing that they all yeah. kind of thump the Bible. Yeah. Um, but I think, like you said, like so many of us experienced trauma in, in religion, mm-hmm. uh, myself included. Um, but I think that kind of, you know, through growth, or maybe we're all kind of entering this age range that it's not about coming back to the church, but realizing that just because religion abandoned you doesn't mean that you don't have to have some connection to something bigger than you. Right. Like yeah. spirituality can exist outside of religion. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I think in general, like, uh, this is not the usual topic, but like in general, religion is kind of uh, organized religion is meant to very much keep people in certain boxes. Exactly. 100%. And people are not able no. to be in certain, you just can't, not you just can't. Yeah. Humans are way too nuanced. Yeah, so it's so um, it's so interesting to see people who have been, tried to be made smaller and smaller and smaller by yeah. their belief systems that they were raised on to be like, fuck the box, I'm me. Yeah. And then reflect back and be like, okay, how did that box that I was raised in, what can I, what can I pull from that? How did that make me me? What, where are the, if there's a crumb it's of value? Literally, like I went yeah. to Catholic school from pre-K to 12th grade. Oh, wow. And graduated. Woof. And I wasn't like. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I like, well, I mean, it happened. Like um, in eighth grade, I had the choice to go to public or Catholic school. Mm-hmm. And I chose Catholic because it was a better school, like education wise, okay. whatever. Yeah. But long story short, like a lot of what you see here today is like an expression of what you just said. Like there was a lot of like putting into a box. You have to do this. You can't do that. Like Mm -hmm. this is wrong. That's not right. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. And it just comes out in what I do as in as a drag entertainer. And it's like I grew up in the 2000s. I was born in 96. So I grew up in the 2000s and I got to see. baby. (laughs) (laughs) I got to see people like Sierra, Nicole Scherzinger, Christina Aguilera, people that can dance and that can sing. And that's why like I do a lot of the things that I I do is Mm because of those three people and among them many others but watching that and knowing as a little kid that like oh you can't do stuff like that because you're a man you need to do this you need to do that it's a lot of like oh well (laughs) now I can jokes on you it's so funny because the things that actually are meant to keep us in line and in boxes are the things that we kind of explode against Mm -hmm. yeah and it's almost like did the constraints make us who we are like, would we be the same without those constraints? Would we have fought to be bigger and louder and more oh. us? I would like to if think we weren't yes. shoved to be so small. Yeah, I know? would like, like to think yes, but I definitely pendulum. do think like I've been a, a big person that's always said like life makes you who you are and you just have to adapt to it. And right. it's like, kind of a shitty thing to say when you have like, bad experiences. Is, but like if you can't roll with the punches and get up and make it happen, then like you have to learn to do something. Right. Well, even, even beyond that, like everything that happens to you, I mean, it, it shapes how you interact with the world around you in the future. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I would just kind of to circle back a little bit. I mean, you saying that you did K through 12 Catholic school in Louisiana I would be really interested to compare, it's a whole other podcast episode, mm-hmm. but to compare your Catholic school experience in Louisiana versus a Catholic school upbringing here in Tennessee, yeah. in the middle, yeah. in middle Tennessee. And, and like, I keep saying like the buckle of the Bible belt, like the Protestant Vatican, because I mean, it's crazy. 
Like now yeah. that I've said it, if you get in a like lift or somewhere or take a car, just like count the churches across a mile. No, literally it's when, insane. Me, when me and There's my girlfriend so landed here, we Googled like, is it safe here for gay people? Like we were scared. Can we hold hands in the airport? Like we, it was genuine conversation. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, fuck. I think big cities like Nashville, Memphis, questionable on Knoxville, Chattanooga, it's fine. Mm -hmm. Everywhere else is like where you have your radar and like alert on. Yeah, like yeah. there's these blue oases, blue oases is kind of throughout the state. And and you you asked about, you know, like living in Tennessee, living in the South. I, I personally like am am very proud to be a I, I was raised in Nashville. I'm very proud to be from here. I know that like the South is um kind of forced to be synonymous with some things that I don't agree with. Right. And and I'll talk more like on the political yeah. sort of aspect of that in a second. But but I think that like the rural areas of any state, no matter which quadrant of the country they're in, mm -hmm. are more conservative than the cities. Right. Yeah. Like that's that's Always. just a fact of life. And so the fact that we have kind of this like broad brush painting everything like east of the Mississippi and south of the Mason Dixon as like one right. thing when what we're seeing in the headlines right now is really what's coming from a select group of legislators. Right. And yeah. And I don't think wholly represents the culture of Tennessee, especially not mm -hmm. the Nashville area, mm -hmm. like at all. I mean, like I am a very conspicuous person. Mm -hmm. That's not a person you can hide. It's a yeah. conspicuous person designed <laughs> to stick out. Very conspicuous person <laughs> when I'm in drag and very obviously queer. And, you know, out of drag, I, I, I mean, I have no story to tell about being like gay bashed or, or mm -hmm. hated. I mean, like the only time I can remember was somebody who was like experiencing homelessness and was very not sober, right. like, and was probably more confused by the situation. Mm -hmm. Cause I don't think I had, a, I think it was just this clown makeup, <laughs> like, and then like regular clothes. Like I too would yeah. be drunk and confused, <laughs> you know? And that's, that's the only story I've got. And that's two years old at this point. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I mean, like my upbringing in the school, sure. Like I experienced some like verbal bullying mm -hmm. and I'm like six, one out of drag. So I have to recognize that there's privilege in my size there when it comes to like physical bullying. Right. But, but I, I think that like this narrative of the South being like just wholly homophobic, transphobic, racist, mm -hmm. et cetera, is actually detrimental when you look at it in this sort of broad political context yeah. because of our electoral college system, which I am not a fan of, yeah. the state lines matter. And so if they can push this narrative that like everybody in this state hates queer people, hates right. people of color, hates gender nonconforming people and get people to go, screw it, I'm moving to California or screw it, I'm moving to New York. Then it's extra fucked. They're yeah. concentrating their voter base yeah. and manipulating the electoral system and 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 I know that like we all have to consider our safety, mm -hmm. but like to anyone listening who lives in the South, like to whatever extent you feel safe to do it, register to vote at your current address and then do it often and mm -hmm. stick around as long as you can. And if you know like cishet couples who got money and want to move to your area, tell them to and tell them to register to vote there. Like, because that's the game we're playing. Yeah. I mean, it's a slippery, slippery slope to fascism yeah. that we are already on and right like, now. And like piggybacking off of that, you said earlier that we're like a conservative state. I don't really believe that. We are a gerrymandered state. Yes. We uh, have been redistricted. We have been, we lost, what was it? Three Democratic seats to one right, in but, Nashville alone. So like there's... The, so there was Nashville as a whole was represented as like one representative and then they redivided it into three districts uh -huh. and now all three districts are occupied or two of them are by Republicans. One's by a Democrat, but and the I closest can, person that lives to Nashville is still like 30 miles away from the oh city. So Tennessee has one of the worst voter turnouts so every terrible. election. Why we had like 36% of the state showed because up to the, vote in the last the election. The media and the narrative convinces us that it doesn't matter. Right. But yeah. local elections, I mean, because voter turnout is so low, mm -hmm. like your vote in those local elections so matters much. so much. Right. These districts in the Middle Tennessee area that were, I mean, heavily mm -hmm. gerrymandered in the last election just last fall, they still only won those districts by five, six, seven percentage points. Jeez. Yeah. I mean, those could be won by like re currently registered voters showing up. Mm -hmm. Or new transplants registering at their current address. Yeah. Like, it's not even about, like, finding new... Like, people that are already, already there here, just, just show need up. to show up. As an outsider, just in the... Seeing the... This thing. As an outsider <laughs> seeing the press, it's really made to, to be, like, this... 
the state as a whole is this way. Exactly. And I can imagine how disheartening that is for, for people who are local, for people who are on the outside or, or anything to be like, what's the fucking point? You know, I like I understand where that comes from. And that's I think that's why it's so important to really get that word out that like you matter and that you yes, can change yeah. things. Because yes. when you feel like you're so small and your voice isn't going to be heard and your voice doesn't matter. Why are you going to speak up and feel like no one's going to hear my little squeak? But it's like, it's right. not a squeak. It's a fucking lion. And I don't know like, if it's there. like a big city thing, but like growing up in a small town in Louisiana, I mean, I lived right next to the third largest city in the state, but it was very like, my mom would be like, all right, we got to go vote. Like we have to do this. Mm -hmm. We have to do that. And it was like, everyone would always be like, voting is very important there. And I don't know if it's like a family thing and it's like cultural, but then you come to a big city and it's like, oh, I don't care. I like my family it. doesn't live here. I'm here on my own. Yeah. Like, I don't think about it. Like it's going to be, it's very important. It's super easy to do. And yeah. you can vote early. And I went, I voted early this last year. It took five minutes. Yeah, I'm sure things have changed over the years and different generations since, since y'all have grown up. I don't know. When did you, when did you move to Nashville? Three years ago. Oh, okay. 2019. So you're, you're newer out here. Yeah. But I, I'm sure it's still kind of similar. Well, I also same, moved here and I was Louisiana. like, I didn't have a lot of queer friends. So like mm -hmm. I would go, my friend was a singer on Broadway. So we would go there mm -hmm. like a lot. And I would sit in like behind the stage and like the VIP and like hang out with them for the first like six or so months. Mm -hmm. And then the pandemic hit. Oh, and so oh, I yeah. would just stay home by myself. So I had like the first year I lived here, I did like nothing queer or gay or whatever at all. Yeah. And then it like. Well, I did do one drag brunch. That's actually where I met this one. Oh, fun. <laughs> um, but since the pandemic, I made it a point to do more queer stuff. I joined Hot Mess Sports, which is a gay, like, recreational kickball and oh. other sports leagues in the city. It's a great and, like, way to plug in. Literally, city. my entire, yeah. like, queer life expanded times 10 by joining yeah. that. So, like, it changed. But at first, it was very, like... I've, I've seen change within three years, but I'm sure not as much as you living here the whole time. Yeah. I was going to, I was going to say like, what has your experience been and how has the, the queer community and the drag community, you know, same or separate really helped you in your, your journey as living authentically yourself, your self liberation, finding mm -hmm. community, all of that. Like how, mm -hmm. how has that affected who you are as a person out here? Well, I mean, for me personally, I, so music started for me on the church house stage, like I was saying, and then I actually got degrees in music. So I have a bachelor's and a master's in viola performance oh God, from fancy. Eastman in North Texas. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, super fancy. Um, and I don't do anything with it. Like I'm a cross so don't worry about it. It's a master's in music. I'm not that smart. Girl. Okay. They were like, That's words, hard. Okay. Words. She doesn't know. <laughs> um, but it was, it was really like a, a return to the stage for me. So I finished my master's North Texas. I grew up here and moved back in 2014 and then I started drag that fall mm -hmm. and it was really like at the time it was kind of like a little bit the universe dared me a little bit I love being on stage mm -hmm. and you know even even lip syncing other people's music you're still kind of getting to to communicate with an audience through music mm -hmm. which I think is really a language that speaks to me a lot um so so getting to do that was really fabulous I resonated with that because I've been DJing for so many years over uh -huh. 10 years and same thing as like, I guess, playing music versus lip syncing it. Uh -huh. It's kind of like that's your way of expressing, even though you're not making the music, uh -huh. you're performing it in some yes. way. And you can really share your feelings, your energy, your story through other people's art exactly. and kind of put your own spin on it. So I, I love that. But my question was... <laughs> Thank you for pulling me back. <gasps> yeah. Uh, my question was, what? Or how has the community out here, the drag community and the queer community played a role in your journey of self-liberation, being yourself, feeling like you can be you, whatever version that is. I see how I got to where we were. Because, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, that was very much what I felt like I needed, a creative outlet, especially being on stage. Mm -hmm. So then very shortly after starting drag, um, I was diagnosed with HIV in early 2017. Mm -hmm. And I'm a person living with, living with, living with, not dying from disease, which, mm -hmm. yay, I've been undetectable for six years. Yeah. Um, but that also was an outlet for me here in nashville there is an iconic legendary queen we have a street named after her bianca page who in the 90s was diagnosed with hiv and medicine is very different than it was 20 years yeah. ago so it was a little bit more of a death sentence at the time yeah. the stigma was much higher and bianca legendarily instead of running from her diagnosis ran towards a microphone mm -hmm. and so that's kind of like a that's a quote from an article that has stuck with me for years at I this point that. and kind of as a mantra for me that like I have a platform and I have a story and that telling that story can save my community around me and, and exalt and uplift them. And so that's like having that access, having that megaphone, that platform through mm -hmm. drag I, has 
I don't know that I could explain the nuance of it, but on many occasions has saved my life. Mm. Wow. Yeah, that's so powerful. I think that's kind of a story, not that specific story, but that's a story that so many people in the queer community have had where, especially with HIV, looking back on mm-hmm. like, okay, things have come a long fucking mm-hmm. way and it yeah. went from super scary to like super manageable. Yeah, super, one pill a day. It's, yeah. It's which, like, you know, you can also do to prevent HIV. Yeah, one, yeah. One shout out prep. Like it's, there's, it's yeah. really manageable now. And I think... Having that, having that representation is so important and it's so incredible to be that voice and have those voices to look back on. And Mm -hmm. in general, I mean, representation across the board for whoever you are, whatever your identity is, having that kind of permission to be yourself is life changing. To be empowered to be yourself. Absolutely. To have the permission, to have the space to do it. Absolutely. And that's, that's kind of why it's also so terrifying to me and i'm sure in uh riles y'all up the legislation that's been going on the drag ban all of the insane anti-lgbtq stuff the gender affirming care being cut like it's it's, it's nuts it's nuts and like every day I wake up and see another headline of another state or like fucking florida it's scary and it breaks my heart that there's people who are going without the empowerment to be themselves feeling like they are not or feeling like they're wrong for mm-hmm. just being who mm-hmm. they are. So it's really interesting because I feel like these times, it's things go one of two ways where people are either like, I'm going to be louder. I'm going to be more in your face. I'm going to make sure you know how much this matters and you're not going to silence me. Mm-hmm. Or it's terrifying and, and people shrink down. That's what they want, though. Exactly. That's what they want. And some people yeah. some people will do that, of course, because it's it's understandably terrifying but i'm i want to know how out here in general with all of this stuff going on especially in the last like what six months i feel like it's gone like quadruple time this this most recent legislative session oh was, was nuts god i think so the the drag ban right now is like temporarily halted or did it's on, it, right? it's on a temporary yeah. restraining order until the end of the month um i think it's the 26 26 or 27th yeah somewhere yeah. right around there mm-hmm. um the so, other thing yeah. so the drag ban does not say the words ban or drag anywhere in it right it uses the phrase yeah, male yeah, and female it. impersonator yeah. go-go dancer and then it's conditional on like four levels. Yeah. Like it has to appeal to a period interest, which has like three conditions. It has to do that. Da, 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 da. Like, so in addition to like the vague language of it, how conditional it is, like question mark, how do we enforce that? Mm-hmm. If you look at that bill just by itself under a microscope, that's all the bullshit of it. Let's zoom out a little bit. We mm-hmm. have these other bills next to it. The gender affirming care ban or the quote unquote, the trans health care ban. Yeah. Um, we see... Um, another piece of legislative legislation in the same session where um, county clerks were going to be allowed to deny marriage licenses to same sex, interfaith, and interracial couples, and just like a whole like just There's bill the, on um, bill on bill ban on, bill. on trans kids and trans like adults in um, sports. Sport, yeah, well. just yeah. like if you look at all of if you zoom out and see like point 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 point, what is the unifier between all of these? They're all progressive ideologies. They're all progressive talking points. So what they're doing is attacking those ideologies and those talking points to the end of what we said earlier, electoral manipulation. Mm -hmm. They want people to be like, screw it, I'm moving out. Because gender affirming care ban is being sued by the ACLU right now. The quote unquote drag ban is uh, under a temporary restraining order and will likely, and it's already redundant. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is redundant of our existing obscenity language. Mm -hmm. Um, Just these, I mean, you think that Clarence Thomas is going to let um, a bill yeah. to allow... Like, that's not going to go through. Yeah. They're wasting time. They're wasting the state's money. And everybody, regardless of politics, hear that. They are wasting taxpayer dollars mm-hmm. on bills that are unconstitutional. And so that's... It. And really, the point is to be bullies. That's mm-hmm. it. And and to the end of electoral manipulation and eventually fascism. Mm-hmm. Like, woof. Woof. <laughs> like, big woof. Yeah. Big, big woof. Um, so, I mean, yes, it's very scary... But I think we also have to look at in in the big picture, in the game of it all, what they want is for each individual group, each subgroup of, of quote unquote progressives that they're attacking to get wrapped up in the minutia of the bills, mm-hmm. to separate ourselves from our brothers and sisters around us. And 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 I know that it's hard for a lot of us, especially us queer folk who who have maybe been at odds with with a, a quote unquote blue collar community for years. But I think that 
that more than anything, we really have to look to working class solidarity mm. right now. Like we have to realize that like they're screwing all of us. Right. Like they're using our identity politics to screw with all of us, to fuck with all of us, mm-hmm. to like bolster capitalism, yeah. like late stage feudalist capitalism. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's terrifying. Yeah. Like that's, the, I mean, the real, like the biggest error to me is that like, like Bezos is going to buy somebody, put them into the presidency, and then you're go- you're going to work for Amazon, live in your Amazon house, and buy yeah, groceries I, at the Amazon grocery store. Yeah. Like what? Yeah. Like that's feudalism. Yeah. Like you are just paying to live on this man's land like at this point. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like we already live in, in essentially modern feudalism, but it's that's just, again another getting episode. Getting more extreme. It's getting more extreme. Yeah. It's getting ridiculous. Episode. God. Sorry to be so bleak. Cause sorry. <laughs> Yay, dragons fierce and fun. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> drag is good that's another part too is like what what is everybody here doing to kind of rally and deal with what's going on is there well, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it is bringing the community together because everyone's truly, got a centralized truly. like interest yeah well i mean in like a simple expression i'm sitting right here Right. So like I'm still here. I'm not allowing all of these bills to like change what I do or who I am. Yes, it's concerning and it's like frustrating, but it's also playing into what you said. Like we can't allow them to change our behaviors or what we're trying to do. Um, Something that we did. Well, Brittany Banks, really, they she got um, how many? 22, 21 of us to do Dragapalooza. Mm-hmm. at City Winery. Which we had a brunch show yeah. benefiting yeah. Inclusion in Tennessee. Um, and we all did one number and just showed the different facets of drag. And it was, I mean, it was on spectrum. April 2nd or 1st? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Uh, the I bill was, like April, oh, because the bill, the was, bill was supposed to go, to go into, into effect, effect April 1st. So I believe it was April 2nd mm-hmm. so or April protests, 1st, whatever basically. day. So it was basically our form of peaceful protest where City Winery allowed us to do it. We had extra security. It was great. So we've banded oh, together as a community. So the security was great. Was so nice. Um, we've banded together as a community. And I feel like since then, most of the community has been more supportive of other people's yeah, gigs, especially right. coming in drag, not just going out of drag. Um, everyone's working so much. I mean, that's also like, the problem that disguise. we're having. Now. Is that a thing where There's like been... if somebody comes to you, say someone's coming to your show and they're in drag, is that like a... I love it. But no, like in general, tell... is that considered like a... You know, like a faux pas? I think no. It depends on like what city you're in. Mm-hmm. I know that like maybe it seemed a little weird here for a minute, but like in like, recent years, like I, I love it because the way I see it, like I produce a ton of the events that I work at. And so for me, the way I see it is like your extra decoration in the room. Right. You're making it keeps the like yeah, energy and vibe when the, the main energy entertainers going. or the people booked to perform Very, are like, changing. You know, I mean, that's what Suzanne Barch made a fucking career out of. You yeah. Know? Like, like putting beautiful people in a room. Yeah. Um, and so I love it. Come on down. And you know, on uh, a lot of occasions, I've had enough tequila that I'm like, you want to do a number? Yeah. <laughs> like, let's go. Yeah, a tip spot. The more the merrier. Yeah, exactly. So Delta talked about Dragapalooza. Actually, a week before that, I think it was, um, there was a big event at Bridgestone Arena. Oh, yeah. Called Love, Love Rising. Rising that featured, uh, I think, about like 20 local entertainers. Um, and then was a music show featuring Marin Morris, Fancy Haygood, Brittany Hozier. Uh, yeah, Brittany Howard, uh, Hosier, Cheryl, Crow. Uh, Cheryl Crow was there, Haley Williams. So this big, I mean, arena size mm-hmm. event, 11,000 people, wow. which like I, I know for me was the biggest crowd I got to perform in front of. Yeah. And then fast forward to about a month ago, 15 of us from Nashville got taken to Knoxville on a bus uh-huh. to perform with Lizzo in front oh my of 18,000 people. Uh, we love Lizzo. All because of, you know, all of this. Wow. And I, you've probably seen the photo of me everywhere at this point because I... Mm-hmm. There, because there's an Associated Press photo of me. And, and, I mean, it's it's a powerful photo. And, and they can buy it. It's a good photo. <laughs> it a is good a good photo. photo. It is That's a good, a good photo. photo. Um, <laughs> but like, and then just like the press in general. I mean, yeah. like People Magazine's Instagram that had me on their page today mm-hmm. or yesterday. Um, I, you know, I've been it's on the Rolling photo Stone's landing page a couple of times. I've been on Yahoo's um, landing page a couple of times. Thank you, PR. Literally, you know, and like soak it up. Yeah. But it's just bringing so much light to to it our really vibrant drag scene here yeah. and it's super exciting to see the turnout i mean the nashville being a community of artists in in a way that i think a lot of people didn't recognize before mm-hmm. i feel like the people we're seeing turn up that weren't turning up before right were the artists who were like girl it's my day off i'm not going out right which right. i get but now they're making like a choice to show up and support us right. and be like yes like i too want to be able to express myself freely on stage right, um, right, right. and so that's fantastic yeah i feel like the intent of all what the bad people will say that 
the bad people. The We're trying fashion. to do has literally had the adverse effect. Yeah. And I feel like even more so oh, yeah. drag, especially here in Nashville, is taking off. In, oh, my, yeah. in my humble opinion. I mean, it kind of was prior. We've had a few girls get on drag race and do this. And we've mm-hmm. had some big names do like Lizzo and some other stuff like that. And so we're getting more and more press, but it's because of all of this like negative attention they want to throw on us that right. it's being turned around to be positive. And yeah. I feel like that party doesn't understand that the media is not in their favor. Yeah. And, they, and it's like no no press is bad press. Yeah. True. So they Thank just you. like are doing what they're doing to because it pleases them, but it's not getting them any further mm. into their goal. Well, look at the Tennessee Three, for instance. Mm. You know, Gloria, yeah. uh, Gloria Johnson, Justin Jones, Justin Pearson. I mean, Justin Jones, Justin Pearson, like skyrocketed to like a quarter million followers. Yeah. They gained like 200,000 followers and, each uh, like, during all week. that drama. Were reinstated because they were going to be. Mm-hmm. I mean, do you do you know what the pro- so they were voted to be expelled? Yeah. But do you understand what the follow up process was? Uh. Uh-uh. So then, based on their expulsion, their local councils, like from the districts they're so elected Nashville in, Nashville and Memphis, mm-hmm. would then either vote to reinstate, or they would be replaced by like an interim until a special election could be held, which would have yeah. been probably held this fall. But these are already districts that are safe Democratic districts. Yeah. So it was either, and Mm -hmm. if the expulsion were to stick, quote unquote, they could run for that spot again. So like maybe they get, they get kicked out for half of a legislative session, right? right? Which like, you know, okay, yes, voice is being disenfranchised. That sucks. But in the long term, what are you doing other than looking like a jackass? Yeah. You know what I mean? They're just trying to be a fucking bully. Like, what are you doing? You're just being a bully. Like, and they, and they, you know, like Gloria didn't get voted out, which in her own words, why not her? Because she's a white lady. Like, I mean, she Something pointed to that do out with race to the. Pre- yeah. Um, but then beyond that, like they came right back. So what was the point? We knew. Yeah. you Did you not research the process? Like they the just process that follows up? Like, did you just decide like there's a lot there's a clear lack of logic right. and brain cells involved in hating people. So I think that that kind of makes sense that there's just a, no thought. Yeah. It's just really polarizing and like I don't understand it. And sometimes I'm like, I would love to like know their thought process or like figure out why they are the way that they are. And then I sit there and I'm like, that's going to bring me no joy in life. No. And also like why? There's no good reasoning ever. No, there money. isn't. And I think it's, it's money like, for a lot of them. Yeah. Lobbyists. I think it's yeah, lobbyists it's money. Mostly probably. But it's have also we, like. Mm. Have we had a conversation about this Delta? So there was another drag bill here in Tennessee. It was a drag permitting bill. Oh, yes. Which would have essentially defined drag entertainers as the same way that strippers are. Oh, are yeah, defined. I saw that. And so that would have meant that we couldn't perform anywhere that has a liquor license. Yeah, because strip clubs here, you have to bring your own alcohol. But oh, you can bring your own alcohol into a club. Well, and LA is- because of the laws that are in place, you have to bring strip your own alcohol B-O-I-O-B. to strip clubs. Oh, wow. Yeah, LA, so if there's any nudity, you can't, like, if, if you see even, like, a little nip, you can't, there's no alcohol allowed. So similar. But yeah, you can't similar. bring your own. So they're just, like, drinking orange juice, looking at naked. Oh, you know, yeah, no, it's like, like, this is weird here. Vibe. It's wild. It's a weird vibe. Yeah. <laughs> But, but essentially, that bill, that bill didn't even make it through committee because like they, failed, they, because they motioned, they, didn't yeah. even get a second. They oh, realized wow. all of the money that they get from taxes on alcohol Scared. sales. They would realized have been lost. question mark or Miss Jack Daniels called somebody up and said, "Hey, not yeah. that one. Yeah. yeah, not that one." Because uh, which I is mean, crazy because Jack Daniels does like pride events all the time yeah. and they sponsor. I mean, that I mean all, all the, the, in the yeah. all the well, no, I was saying like they're in like spirits with us to go against these people, not directly, but. There's very, there's very. It's more of a beneficial thing for them, bev- like alcohol, beverage, whatever brands that are not yeah. behind like pride events, and you know what was it? Dylan Mulvaney with uh-huh, the Bud, with Light the Bud Light thing. Bud Light, you know, yeah. it's like of all things, you think Bud Light is like some a very certain type right. of person is drinking that, and they, they were still like, this is a good. They're not, they're not gonna put somebody behind their marketing team. It's. Without some research, and they knew that oh, was truly. still a good idea. They were like, "I'm truly. not drinking any Anheuser Busch products." They're like, "I'm you gonna have Coors Light," and I'm like, "It's flush still it. owned by the same people." And then, like a lot of these big companies are all, I mean, BlackRock has significant stake in Coke, everything and Pepsi. in the universe. Yeah, <laughs> but like Coke and Pepsi. Yeah, because I, I think what so many of these like major level capitalists mm. are are really doing, like the real sales pitch is is culture war. Yeah. It's not about a good product. It's about like this product over that product because right. they like that product, right. which is the same thing that's happening here. It's really yeah. just a culture war that they're trying to drive. Yeah. And and so I, ugh. like, can we not get caught up in it? Because honestly, it's a trap. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's a, trap. a trap. And like, it's never had any, I, 
I think we've managed to kind of shut up about it because everybody's been like, it's never had anything to do with the children. Like you've proven that time and yeah. time again. But that was their like leading argument. It was yeah. they were protecting children there's from still what? People, there's still people trying to push that. From it's what? Just... Like you're not protecting them from starvation. You're not protecting them from living in the streets. Mm-hmm. You're not protecting them from being undereducated. Like what are you protecting them from? from? Sexual abuse in their homes not or in the church. Or in the school. church. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Or the guns. Hello. Or like, the guns. Yes. Yeah, Hello. The guns. Yeah. I don't know. It's. It's it's a fucking chaotic mess. Truly. It's a chaotic mess. Truly. But let's try and make it cute, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I mean, that's what the glitter and rhinestones are yeah, for. Yeah, that makes it a little bit more manageable. And I think also why, like, as queens in general, I think your presence is so important because y'all are so vibrant and mm. visible and sparkly in every single way you can imagine and that representation means so much for so many people Mm -hmm. but that takes so much courage especially in what's going on now with all of the traps with all of the fear-mongering with all of that so how do you how do y'all personally find that confidence and that courage because everybody has their moments of insecurity they're like is this worth it can i do this you know, the self-doubt, the imposter syndrome, all of that. How how do y'all like individually pull your yourself out when you're feeling a little bit funky? There's like an indescribable energy I get when performing. Mm-hmm. Um, I took dance as a little kid and was bullied. So I quit, only did it for a year. Mm-hmm. And so everyone thinks I'm this like trained choreographed dancer because of the way I perform. I'm really not. I just like watch and kind of like follow the beat of a song and do things. But there's an energy that I get when performing, I can't describe it, but that keeps me going and motivated. And there's so many times where I'm like, why am I doing this? Like, Mm -hmm. it's expensive. It's actually not that fun. Sometimes my feet hurt. I'm tired of this area being not in the way that it's supposed to be. Um, But just that energy and like the crowd reception and knowing that like I brought joy to someone else's life Mm -hmm. is what keeps me going and like why I'm not afraid to like be here today and be doing this. Right. No, that makes so much sense. Do you feel like you had that similar kind of feeling driving you even prior to coming out here back in Louisiana? Like, since no, you started this? no, I was like, I didn't have a rough time coming out. It was definitely an awkward transition. My family is much better now. We're all on good terms, like no qualms with anybody. But moving here, my life literally changed immensely. And I had so many friends from back home being like, your presence on social media keeps me going. Like they let, I like do this stupid thing where I'm like, I'm an influencer, (laughs) but I'm I'm really not like, and so like I'll order like three things of clothes. I'm like, guys, I got a package from Sheen and I paid for all of it. (laughs) And so like I go through and I just like, here's what I got. And like, I do stupid things like that. And all my friends like, this is hilarious. Keep Mm -hmm. going. So like, I wouldn't have never done that in Louisiana. And like the, I like, Got confidence from joining Hot Mess Sports and like having all these people be like, we want the, you should the do community. that. We want to see you. Like um, literally last night, we have a charity show every year for Nashville Launchpad, and I hosted it with a friend. And I don't get to host a lot in the city because I'm still newer, but hosting literally was just like this fun thing and getting the messages this morning that were like, you were amazing. Like you kept the energy going. We all had such a good time. It like things like that really like encompass the energy of yes, I can keep doing this and I want to do right. it because everyone gives lovely feedback. Mm. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, that's that's so amazing. Did you why do we keep hitting this fucking thing? <laughs> Were you doing drag in Louisiana or did you no. just start when you came out? I started here. here. Oh, wow. So I've only been doing drag for like twenty months. Oh my god. So in October, oh my god, that was like a newborn be... baby explanation of time. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 20, yeah, in months. <laughs> uh, Twenty months. Yeah, it sounds really stupid, but months, it's like I, I'm 17 like past hours, a year. Thirteen minutes and two seconds. Well, I mean, <laughs> we could get four technical, seconds, but five I'm like past a year and a half. But like October's two years, so like mm-hmm. after October, I'll probably just be like two years until yeah. I hit three. But like then you're a toddler. Yeah, I mean, I'm an infant <laughs> right now, but yeah. it's whatever. Oh my god, oh, what wow. size diapers are you in? Oh my god. <laughs> So, so what about, what about you as far, I mean, now with everything going on, but just across your whole journey of, I mean, honestly, probably since like coming out as queer till now, what has gotten you through those hard self-questioning times of the, maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe I'm not worthy. Maybe this is a bad idea. Maybe I should be smaller or quieter. Any of those things. You know, I. Uh, like I've been asked that question a couple times recently mm-hmm. and I don't know that I have like an easy answer to it. Uh, for me, like my mom tells stories about me like going off to kindergarten and like dropping me off at school mm-hmm. and like 
my brother like kicking and screaming me like yes i got it see you later (laughs) whatever and so like i guess there's some level of it that's always kind of been there Mm -hmm. there's a little bit of it's i don't know that it's confidence so much as aloofness (laughs) like (laughs) like i'm just kind of unaware like yeah yeah, it's me in my own world and independent Yeah, yeah very that um but then like in drag specifically i mean there is something that's very like this is an armor Mm. about it and and not to be cliche but i think if we like come back a little bit um you know rupaul always says we're all born naked and the rest is drag right what does that really mean well i mean we all are born naked and everything we decide about ourselves beyond that every choice we we make about how we we want to be perceived how we present ourselves Mm -hmm. that's all drag and so if i'm just doing like if what i put on out of drag like my t-shirt and jeans which is always going to be like a stupid graphic tee or a whitney houston tee Mm -hmm you know my like quote unquote boy <laughs> look mm-hmm. even that is a choice that i'm like choosing something that i feel comfortable in and mm-hmm. if i'm extending that and throwing glitters and glitter and rhinestones on it and make and making a choice everywhere about yeah. how i want to present that's even more powerful right and and so i think that i i definitely like extract a lot of power from that but i don't know i mean like i'm definitely you know like a little anxious and nervous sometimes a mantra though that lives rent free in the back of my head is jennifer lewis going leave that nervous shit at home it's boring <laughs> and you know like if i'm about to walk on stage and i feel a little There's anxious no a little nervous i just listen to miss jennifer lewis in the back of my head and then i'm a fool oh my god i'm <laughs> stealing that yeah wow. absolutely Keep oh it. that's so funny like you know she said it to pheromone on drag race but like it's lived like right forever it just lives back there yeah. it's also like I was just thinking about it. It's kind of crazy. Like you said, did you do drag in Louisiana? There really aren't as many opportunities there. Mm -hmm. Like there's like one gay bar in the city that is next to mine. And there's like three gay bars in Baton Rouge. There's obviously more in New Orleans. But like Shreveport has like. Well, it's honestly they don't. Because like I feel like in a bigger city, drag is like accepted more. And like it's not Mm -hmm. as big of a deal. But like back home is very like family oriented like cajun people are extremely very family oriented and i feel like there's a lot of like not acceptance so people are afraid to do it but like here um i feel like within the 20 months i've gotten to do so much and grown a lot so far but like back in the day before i started drag there was really like one place to do drag and then like because of Adelia and a few others, we've had a million places to do drag. And I feel like because of that, I've rapidly expanded and grown so fast. And it's really crazy to me to think like if I had started in Louisiana, I would not be where I am today. Right. And like that's another thing of like you have to like keep going and keep doing everything that you're doing and like not let these people win. Yeah. That, and that's such a testament to you to how important community is. Yeah. To be in a place where you are encouraged to be yourself and empowered to explore and empowered to just evolve and and be you whatever that is like people there to support you through that journey that is so so important and unfortunately a lot of people are in places where they just don't that community doesn't exist like I get a lot of people messaging me from the Middle East about the show being like, thank you, because I don't have anyone Uh here. I can't tell anybody about myself. Uh Yeah. So thank you for this existing or whatever. And I'm just so glad that there's places that people can at least look to for hope, whether it is online, whether it is a city close by that you can find somewhere that people really are just like ready to accept you with open arms and support you through your journey. Well, and to that note specifically, speaking about a city close by Nashville as as juxtaposed against, uh, is Shreveport the big city you're near? I'm near Lafayette. No, Lafayette. Um, But Nashville is, is, it's kind of a big city for like the mid South. Mm. Like yeah. it's kind of like the big city for the mid south. Mm-hmm. Like I guess like Atlanta has some pull. Yeah. And then like if you Atlanta's get like, more like southeast though, like it's over near the yeah. Yeah. If you get like sort of like north of Louisville, then like Chicago is obviously gonna like pull. But like if you're like Cookville, Crossville, Knoxville, Chattanooga, Jackson, Lexington, mm-hmm. Bowling Green, I mean, South of Louisville, even, even Memphis, like Tola, mm-hmm. you know, if you're anywhere within like a two hour radius. Nashville is the, the big hub, city. Yeah. yeah. And if you add on top of that, that it's like an entertainment city, mm-hmm. I, I don't think you could forever kill a queer community here. Right. You could close every bar and like give it two years, more would open. Yeah. Or people are throwing shit at their house. More yeah. would open. Like, like, people are throwing shit at the house just, are like, more like there is work. Straight here for owned businesses people. are going to do like queer nights right. once a month or something, right. which is like kind of what things are already happening. Yeah. Like uh, Eldar might do, might do, you know, wigs for drag queens, but like, you know, was like, has been asked to tour with major musical acts. Mm-hmm. Like, 
You make it work. Yeah. And, you know, like I, a friend of mine who's a makeup artist has painted Dolly, who was Tanya's makeup artist for a while. Like, and that person lives here as well, also does drag. So this intersection of like the entertainment industry and drag, because drag is really just part of that industry. Yeah. Is, is massive. Yeah. Wow. God, well, I, I think that's an amazing point to wrap up on. Yeah. Honestly. Like, drag is an integral part of entertainment, and it deserves the respect and light that everything Truly. else has. And it is just an entertainment. It's a, it's, a, it's a performance art. Yeah. I mean, like, one of the examples I've been using lately, if people want to circle back to, like, oh, the kids mm. thing. <laughs> Bob Saget. America's dad on Full House. Yeah. But then... Does stand up comedy that's just as crude as anything, you know? Yeah. So, like, tailoring your performance to your audience, everybody's yeah. capable of doing it. Right, right, right. And then, I guess, like, the final thing I didn't get to say yet that mm -hmm. I wanted to is that if all of this is a culture war, which I think it is, yeah. And then to quote Rent for the second time today, <laughs> the opposite of war isn't peace, it's creation. Mm. And so, that's what we're out here doing is creating art, living authentically, existing beautifully. And if you're out there, keep doing it. I love that. Just make beauty. I love that. Do you have any final words for anyone who might be listening and like questioning their fucking life? For me, drag is just freedom. Yes. So literally to anyone listening, if you do drag, if you don't do drag, whatever, if you want to dabble in it, do it. But I think not drag itself, but just living is just freedom and don't allow what these other people are doing to us or trying to put into place to change what you're planning to do or want to do. Just keep living who you are authentically and expressing yourself each and every day. It may be tough. It may be hard, but you one day at a time and it'll work out. I, I'm going to paraphrase a speaker that I love, Alok, if you're familiar. Mm -hmm. um, basically, feel empowered to free yourself from the shackles of the gender binary. Like literally feel empowered to to wear a little glitter, to wear some color, to have mm -hmm. fun. And so that, and then also follow me on Instagram at Veg for short. That's Veg like vagina for like the number and short, like not tall. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And while she's plugging Instagrams, I'll shame. She has more followers than me. So don't follow her. Follow me. <laughs> Mine is just Delta Granta. Delta like Delta. Grant like the boy name and A like the beginning of the alphabet. I'm Delta right. like the airline. Grant there, like that's what I meant to say. A Delta like, like the, the airline. Grant yeah. like the boy name and A or Grant like a wish. And then <laughs> A on go. the end. We're workshopping that. Okay. I'm <laughs> still working on it. I love it. Awesome. Well, thank you so, so much. This is wonderful. Thank you and for I'm having so, you. so happy. So, yeah. What a blast. Yeah. Uh, thank you again for Jeez. using your platform to elevate queer voices in the yeah, South. Yeah, of course. I think we get overlooked a lot. So it means yeah, a lot. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, amazing. Well, we're going to wrap that up. Love your cheers hair. Cheers to Cheer Day. Yeah. Vanilla. Yeah. Cheers to kittens. Cheers to kittens. Yeah. Woo! Cheers. Love your hair. Hope you win. Yes. And we're out. And we're out. And we're out. Oh. Woo! <laughs> 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 Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.